en thème, c'est cool. Pour l'instant, il n'y a rien de nouveau, quoi. Les images. C'est en thème. Un yes. Alors je vais baisser un peu le son de mon Discord et euh, etc. Et couper quand il y a des trailers et quand ils parlent tout ça. Comme ça, on pourra bien. Oh my gosh, how cool is that je vais essayer de traduire des morceaux aussi parce que bon. But welcome everybody to EA Play. I'm Andrea Renee, and while you might recognize me from the gaming community, I'm kind of a new face around here. So this year, EA wanted to change things up because they know that I'm both a gamer and a fan. So they invited me to come and host the show. And I think this year is going to be a lot of fun, you guys. I hope you're ready because we're about to kick the press conference off. But before we do that, EA Play is more than just the show you're about to watch. Right behind these doors, there is a fan fest outside, and it is huge this year. It's a full three-day gaming festival where thousands of gamers can come and play games for free. Now, inside the theater here, there are hundreds of community members from all over the world who are going to be capturing, streaming, and getting their first impressions of the games that we're going to be showing off here today. But before we can get to that, we've got some reveals, of course. We're going to kick things off with a look at Battlefield 5 multiplayer. Now I know Trevor Noah gave okay, you the first multiplayer de Battlefield V. Battlefield V. Comme Metal Gear Solid 5 mais c'est V. Then we're going to move on to FIFA 19 and boy do they have some big news you guys. Any World Cup fans? You guys excited? Yeah, it's going to be awesome. Then we've got two new indie games to share and then I'm going to come back towards the end of the show with some of my favorite developers to give you guys a nice meaty look at Anthem. And of course, yeah, we got the woos for Anthem. I'm into it. You want you want to do this with me? <laughs> well, would it be fun you guys if I killed you all the stick at once, right? Give him, give him a break. He needs to just enjoy the show. On est là pour le jeu. Je peux pas chier. Let's get things started. Ok, Battlefield V, allez, c'est parti. Ouais. It's time to kick this thing off. It's been two weeks since we revealed a Battlefield 5. And you know what? It's been exciting, it's been a lot of speculation, and so many brilliant remixes of a revealed trailer. But there's also been lots and lots of questions from the community. And we've heard you, you want to see more gameplay innovations. You want to know how customization actually works, and you want to know more about our take on the Second World War. So today, We'll show you more gameplay and why this is the deepest and most immersive battlefield yet. It certainly is. You will be able to dive and smash through windows to surprise your enemies. Where previously okay, on va passer par les fenêtres et tout ça, c'est cool. You will now be able to move these weapons around on the battlefield and gain a Ah, ça c'est bien ça. And our renowned destruction system is back and more impactful than ever. So la, well, la destruction est cool, really est bien faite. Vous ne pouvez pas vous cacher de ces pesquets tanks plus qu'ils viennent vous chercher pour vous, qu'ils se rivent dans ces bâtiments. Et vous allez maintenant pouvoir customiser vos soldats, vos véhicules et vos armes, non seulement pour le gameplay, mais aussi pour le look, comme partie de notre portrait de la Seconde Guerre mondiale. Il faudrait qu'ils montrent la custom parce que quand ils disent customisation, s'il faut, c'est quelques couleurs et basta. Ils aiment bien jouer avec les mots. Alors, on veut vous parler de ces moments de héroïsme humain. 
It is about witnessing the war through the eyes of the men and the women who shaped the world forever. Real and, real and relatable people facing the brutality of war. We started off by an exclusive look at uh, the Nordlys war story over at the Xbox briefing tomorrow. Thanks, Lasse. Something not to miss tomorrow. So, a launching in October is just the beginning. You will all go on an expanding journey through the Second World War. No loot boxes, no premium pass. <laughs> <laughs> Every day, ils avaient déjà expliqué ça, qu'il n'y avait pas de season pass, pas de, de loot boxes, pas de premium aussi. Attends, c'est un battle royal qui rajoute So we bring those pillars of battlefield with destruction, team play, vehicles into this new experience. So we will bring you experience that you haven't played before in Battlefield or anywhere else. But more about that later this year. So with that, it's time to show you what makes Battlefield so special. It's the unmatched intensity of our multiplayer sandbox. And this time, it's even more epic, fighting across multiple maps and modes. Welcome to your next Battlefield experience And this is your first look at ground operations. And this time, even featuring music. Ground operation? <laughs> Je sais pas ce que c'est. Je suis sûr que c'est un battle royale. <laughs> Ça serait drôle. le fait qu'on puisse bouger les, les artilleries et tout ça c'est vachement cool point de vue stratégie ça peut être vachement bien en, en, en jeu en fait mais après entre les trailers et euh, ce qui se passe vraiment en jeu c'est différent à chaque fois C'est quoi ça du coup du... Un DLC Un, un avant-première que sur Xbox Sempre sonhei em tornar-me um campeão. É preciso determinação e vontade de vencer. Até mesmo nos momentos mais difíceis, tu tens de continuar a acreditar. Esta é a tua oportunidade de te mostrar ao mundo. Bah oui, c'est tout, hein. Campeão. C'est des teasers à chaque fois. Bon là, c'est quoi C'est FIFA. Le problème avec les trailers de Electronic Arts, la plupart du temps, c'est que il y a quasiment pas de gameplay à chaque fois. On a toujours l'impression que ça en est, mais c'est juste des cinématiques qui sont bien, bien ficelées. Donc il y a la Ligue des Champions, FIFA 19, ça va. Être cool. Sympa pour ceux qui aiment.
That's the UEFA Champions League, the pinnacle of club football, where the world's best clubs compete and icons of the game like Gerard and Cruyff cemented their legacies. The world's biggest qu'ils te mettent... league Genre le trailer de Battlefield Et une fois que le trailer Non mais c'est... oui c'est ça Mais en fait quand tu vois le trailer t'as plein de questions Genre est-ce que le gameplay va être comme ça Est-ce que ça va être ça Est-ce qu'on peut faire ça Et puis après ils te foutent un autre trailer et bien du coup tu sais plus ce que tu voulais dire <rire> Voilà Tu perds, le, tu perds le, le, le fil de pensée Hop c'est bon c'est fini Tu t'enchaînes avec un autre jeu It's where football's biggest heroes oui, oui, sur, uh, de Ronaldo l'Xbox, hein. and Neymar clash every year. And it's the place where champions rise. And you've been asking for this for a long time. On va un peu discuter entre les trailers, hein, je préviens. And that's why we're bringing the Quand c'est pas super intéressant. The game. There'll be an authentic Champions League tournament mode. Your club will chase this trophy in career mode. Alex Hunter will pursue Champions League glory in your story mode, the journey. Donc en gros, il y a la Champion League, la, la Champion League. C'est ça. Et c'est avant ça n'existait pas dans FIFA. C'est qu'est-ce que c'est quoi la vie And all that's just the beginning. Ah. As you know, the heart and soul of FIFA is gameplay. And this year we're giving you the tools to control the pitch in every moment, from your tactical approach to the match to each technical touch. And we know how passionate you are about gameplay, so we've worked hard to shape and refine our vision for FIFA 19 with input. J'y connais rien à FIFA, hein, donc euh, mon Discord m'aide pour ça. <rire> Je connais rien du tout. Detailed feedback sessions with FIFA pros, and we're going to be sharing a lot more about gameplay throughout the summer. But what I can tell you right now is that the quality bar in gameplay was raised yet again this year. So we look forward to everybody experiencing the game on the hands-on sessions this week. And also, of course, we're extremely excited for everybody to play it when we launch on September 28th. And that's our FIFA 19 news headlined by the UEFA Champions League. But I just wanted to take a minute to pause and reflect. <laughs> Standing next to this trophy is a little bit surreal. You know, growing up, there's two iconic bizarre, trophies là-bas, that vous sentez une licence Diablo Battle Royale sur console. And for your club, <laughs> it's this one. <laughs> The pursuit of énorme. Champions League glory. But for your country, it's this trophy. <laughs> the World Cup. And with the tournament starting in just five days, we're excited for the world to compete for it in FIFA 18. As you can imagine, all of us on the FIFA team can't wait for the start of the World Cup. And we want to celebrate with FIFA 18 players, which is why we've just updated the game with a free World Cup experience on PlayStation 4, Xbox One, PS, PC, and Nintendo Switch. <laughs> But you can take Ronaldo and Portugal to their first World Cup victory. Or you can write your own story with some great nations who didn't qualify this year. Or you can make a crazy dream a reality for your home country like mine, Iceland. Who would have thought that a nation of only 350,000 people would ever qualify? And you can feel their excitement. Yeah. Apologies to any England fans in the room that might still sting. <laughs> <laughs> And Lena isn't the only one who's excited. FIFA 18 players are loving the World Cup experience so far. But we don't want to stop there. We want to invite everyone to come and join the celebration. So I'm pleased to announce that for a limited time, FIFA 18 complete with the entire World Cup experience is available for a free trial on PlayStation 4 and Xbox One and on PC through Origin Access. Yeah, you can download and play the entire game right now for free. Yeah. Ouais, faut applaudir. Ouais, sympa. Jeu gratuit. So to kick off the trial, Au we've moment. got some of the world's biggest creators who are going to be playing live at the end of the show, representing their nations in a little mini World Cup tournament. And this summer will bring so much more for Donc on peut jouer à FIFA 18 gratuitement pour le moment sur uh, PC and par origine et, uh, et sur uh, PS4 et Xbox. Meantime, on peut le télécharger gratuitement, c'est plutôt cool. Sympa. Thank you and au revoir Mr. Dan.
Les gens ont pas l'air emballés. Ah, c'est ah, du FIFA, c'est certains types de personnes. Hein. C'est un public qui est très précis. Hein. Les, jeux de... Les jeux de sport. Hein. Good morning, EA Sports, FIFA 19, you know, the FIFA community never rests. 20 million people from 60 countries playing in competitive leagues this year. Well, the FIFA team never rests either, bringing the Champions League and the World Cup and so much other greatness to FIFA this year. We can't wait for you to experience it all. Um, we've got so much to do here today, but I want to welcome you to EA Play. It's our third EA Play and our second one in Hollywood, and we couldn't be more excited to have you with us to share all the games that we have to show you. We've got lots to do, but before we, get, before we move on, I'd like to share just a couple of things. The greatest disruption to the consumption of entertainment media in the last five years is the combination of streaming plus subscription. As consumers, watching movies, watching TV, listening to music, reading books has never been easier. And we believe that disruption is going to be a pro have a profound impact on our industry in the next few years. And so over the last couple of weeks, you will have seen that we announced a new team from Israel has joined Electronic Arts to help our investment to extend our thinking and extend our pioneering into this cloud gaming world. For many people, that's going to mean extending the experiences they already play on our partner platforms. For others, it's going to mean new games and new modalities of play across a whole variety of platforms. But for everyone, it's going to mean playing games anywhere, anytime. So this week, we've got a tech demo running. Um, all of our games streaming in HD from the cloud to multiple devices that you'll be able to try out for yourselves. Now it's not quite ready for full market prime Il y avait déjà la Nvidia qui faisait ça. Non, la tablette avec uh, Steam ou je sais pas quoi là. The second part of that of course is subscription. And we started subscription a number of years ago and many millions of you have signed up and experienced the joy of being able to have full access to a great catalog of games. Today we're announcing Origin Access Premiere. So three things you need to know about it. Origin Access Premier will bring you all of our new PC games, starting with Madden NFL, back on the PC for the first time ah, in over a decade. Ah, c'est comme le PlayStation Plus en fait. <laughs> non? Then FIFA 19, Battlefield 5. Tu payes tous les mois et t'as des jeux gratuits. And there'll be many more titles in the years to come. Second, you get access to the ah, vault, oui. our library of over a hundred games from EA and other publishers. And third, it will launch later this summer. So that's a little later in the year, but if you want to get started right now and experience the benefits and joys of subscription, come in and play a free trial of Origin Access, our base subscription, this weekend. Thank you and have a great show. Je veux en thème, bordel. Je veux qu'il soit bien. Hey, everybody! What's up? So I'm here, Salut, sitting Valentin. inside the crowd at EA Play, and I just happened to find Mr. Vince Ampella here in the audience from Respawn. What's going on, Vince? How are you feeling today? I'm feeling great. I love this stuff. I love seeing new games. I mean, someone's super excited about that man on PC, right? Yeah! So, um, you guys may have seen that uh, Vince was tweeting yesterday, and there has been a bunch of speculation. So, uh, well, you want to just get right to it? Sure. I mean, we're not ready to show all of our stuff yet. We're working on a bunch of stuff. It's amazing. <gasps> C'est Respawn Entertainment. But 
We wanted to bring a little tidbit. Shh. So okay, we've been silence. working with Lucas Attention. on getting ah. the name and kind of the setting for what our Star Wars game is going to be and we're going ah, to talk about it right ça. now. Oh, you guys got any guesses? I bet you the the internet bah, is going wild Star Wars, right now. Mon... Oh, so. <laughs> so the Star Wars name is Jedi Fallen Order. Woo! Star Wars. So Star Wars Jedi Fallen Order. Yeah. So it kind of gives ouais. you some idea that you'll be playing a Jedi. <laughs> so does that mean I get to like hold a lightsaber? Yes. <laughs> so Vince, you got it. You got anything else? Well, it takes place during the dark times. Trying to be a little vague here, but when the Jedi's are being hunted, so it's going to be spectacular. So for all the like the hardcore nerds out there who want to know like where in the timeline, like what between which episodes is it? Between three and four. Okay. All right. Between three and four. That sounds like a nice time. You got it, uh, any other tidbits? No? It's not a nice. It's a dark time. It's a dark time. <laughs> Bad time. Does that mean this could just be all dark and serious? It's amazing. <laughs> All right, so I think people are now anxiously want to know, like, when when can we play the game? Right. Uh, it will be holiday of next it's year, amazing. 2019. It's amazing. It's dark. So, sorry to dash any hopes. No. <laughs> but now that we know, we can set expectations. Mm -hmm. We're all going to be amped up, and uh, hopefully, we'll hear from more from you maybe uh, maybe next year. Oh yeah. Vince, <laughs> it was great to see you. Thanks for stopping by the show Et après, today. Et après, les prochaines uh, vont dire ah, ça a été repoussé. Comment t'aimes? So I'm gonna toss it over to Dennis. <laughs> ouais. Un solo. Hello there. Gros, ouais. My name is Dennis. I work at Dice in Stockholm on Star Wars Battlefront 2. I'm voilà. really happy and excited to be here today. So Lui thank fait un job you so much for hanging out with me for a little bit. So we launched our game in <laughs> November of last year, and clearly we didn't get it quite right. So instead of coming out of the gate sprinting like we really wanted to, we had to take a step back and make sure that we were delivering the game that our players really wanted. Oui, un peu trop tard, so we decided to completely overhaul our progression system and add a bunch of new character cosmetics for players to collect instead. So from there, We added a new hunt mode, inspired by the original Battlefront games that I loved personally, starting with the Ewoks on Endor. And <laughs> thank you. Uh, we, um, it turned out to be by far the most popular update of the game, and the team loved building Ewok hunt. Wow. So as you might know, we're currently in our Han Solo season with content from the movie coming next week. It's headlined by the new planet Kessel, a really dangerous place, and it features the return of one of our favorite modes, Extraction. So looking forward a little bit, this summer we will be introducing a new squad system to the game, which will allow you to team up much easier and play with your friends. Du Star Wars en chemise de We're also <laughs> adding a new Starfighter <laughs> mode focused around dogfighting with your hero ships. Bon, pour ceux qui jouent encore à ça, bah, il va avoir encore des mises à jour et tout ça et des nouveaux modes, donc c'est cool. Multiplayer sandbox experience focused around capturing command posts and attacking and taking out capital ships. But that's not all. Sympa. We know that you have been asking for new heroes, villains and planets ah, nouveau from héros, a nouvelle planète. era that features a very iconic Star Wars conflict. So I'm excited to confirm bah, y a pas le dernier, le mec, avec son, la, son sabre we'll be going avec deep euh, la garde, là. Oh. Ouais. It's only fitting that we begin on the planet Geonosis, featuring ah. multiple levels, including the largest level we have ever built for Battlefront. So let's talk about the heroes and villains. First, let me introduce... The most powerful droid, <laughs> the ah, leader of the most bras, powerful non? droid army in the galaxy, General ah, Grievous. Il était pas dans le jeu? And yes, he will be going up Putain, against my own était, personal plus. favorite, Jedi Master Obi-Wan Kenobi. Ah. Finally making his debut in Battlefront after all these years. So, but we're, we're not done. Ouais, Obi-Wan Kenobi. They will not come alone. Joining them is the Dark Lord 
and leader of the Separatist Alliance, Count Dooku, as well Dooku. as someone to bring balance to the force, Obi-Wan's unruly Padawan, Anakin Skywalker. Wow. The team at sympa. home is extremely excited to be building all of these cool things. EA and DICE are committed to Battlefront. We had a rough start, but I really think that this game has a bright future. Thank you very much for playing the game, providing us with your feedback, talking to us. Together, we will make this as the greatest game that we can possibly build. There would be no Battlefront without you. So thank you, may the force be with you, and enjoy the rest of E3. Thanks. Bon, moi, la bonne chose, c'est qu'ils savent... Ils sont... Enfin, ils savent qu'ils ont fait plus ou moins de la merde, que les gens étaient pas contents, donc... Euh, ils, ils se rattrapent, ouais. Ils essayent. Ils continuent, quoi. Ouais, donc ça va. Enfin, c'est sympa. Ah, c'est quoi ce jeu Je me rappelle plus le titre. Ah, il y avait de jeu. Il était pas mal. C'était sur PS4. Sûrement. It's really good to see you. Uh, <laughs> in Unravel, we used yarn to symbolize love and the bonds between people. In our new game, <laughs> we, we tear that ah, bond up right at mec. the start. You lose <laughs> everything, including your spark. But Unravel when meets Subnautica, oh merde, no. You find hope. Oh, y a la and you form a new bond. And your spark is rekindled, and it leads you off on an adventure. No. So welcome to Unravel 2. Woo! Woo! It's a game about fresh starts and second chances. These two <laughs> little souls who refuse to give up and who build something new and beautiful together. Sur les doigts. And the whole game is inspired by that spirit of optimism and togetherness. You see, it's all made to be played with two characters. You can play it alone, or you can play it in co-op with a friend. But there's always two characters there, sharing one. Ah, yard, donc apparemment le nouveau jeu, il y aura toujours deux personnages, mais on peut jouer à This solo game, en, ou en coop en fait. C'est sympa, ça va, sympa. It's, it's both friendlier cool. and more challenging. Donc il y aura sûrement des puzzles par rapport euh, à deux personnages en fait. Ouais, sympa. And I want to show it to you now. So I, I brought some help. Uh, so please welcome Michael to the stage. So a producer at Coldwood. Ah, il va nous montrer du gameplay And en live. And try to show you a little bit of what I'm cool. talking about about how you can play the game in, in co-op with yourself essentially. En coop avec soi-même. <laughs> so this wasn't prepared. There we are. So when you're playing it by yourself, you can essentially pick up the other character and carry them along through the more fast-paced segments of the game. And we actually tried to include a bit more of those because we figured that since it's a co-op game, we wanted to have joli, more like super beau. thrill and danger and kind of wow moments. Uh, Apparemment, quand t'es en, like en fun and exciting. dans le jeu, tu peux prendre l'autre personnage. C'est pour ça qu'ils ont l'air d'avoir fusionné en fait. C'est ce qu'ils disent. C'est pour and aller plus vite. Areas, like this, et après, pour les puzzles, on peut se dissocier et faire des choses à deux. Des puzzles à deux. Because that's how we've essentially designed all the problems and puzzles of the game that you're always working together and helping each other ah, out and dessous, utilizing this bond between you to okay. overcome any obstacle that you come across.
Ah ok donc là il a distrait la... le dindon là et, et après ils sont passés par... par le dessous en fait. Ça va, ouais, il s'entraide, on peut okay, s'entraider et tout. Il y aura sûrement plein de, de puzzles comme ça à deux. Où c'est qu'on fait swinger en fait euh, l'autre euh, personne. <rire> <rire> Sympa. C'est ouais, super beau. Salut Rick. Sympa. Now we can breathe again. Yeah, finally. Or can we? <laughs> so that's a that's a quick little look at um, Unravel 2. Uh, and. Uh, <laughs> Yeah, I, I, I really hope you like it. And um, before I go, I Ça just want to send some, some love to the team back home because working on this game has been an, a, a completely amazing team effort in so many levels and everybody has worked so hard. So there, there's a bunch of us from Coldwood here and, and thank you to those and thank you to everybody back home and thank you, love you. Thank you, Martin, and the brilliant team at Coldwood. The great, the game is really strong. These guys have done an amazing job, and it's clear that they have a lot of passion, and I can't personally wait to play Unravel 2 with my kid. But what's even more amazing is that we will make Unravel 2 available to everyone today. Yep, you heard that right. You'll be able to take these two Yarnies on their next big adventure starting today. The game is finished, it's out. <laughs> So thank you, Martin, and thank you to the team at Coldwood. Back in 2015, we started the original Unravel. On peut l'acheter. Seek out cool. the most creative, independent developers and bring them into our EA Originals program. It's been our way of helping these creators bring their unique games to the world and to tell their stories. And last year, bah, si vous êtes intéressé, vous pouvez acheter uh, stage, uh, Unravel 2 déjà. C'est cool. And I think we all kind of remember that. Um, And you might even remember him from the Game Awards as well. 
I think I did. Anyhow, in March, that game caught fire. It's, it was in it, it's innovative, it's fun, and it's something fresh and new, and you all loved it. We saw over two million players in the first two weeks. And A Way Out is such a huge success that Joseph and his team are expanding and moving into a new A Way Out, pour ceux qui n'avent pas, c'est un so jeu qui était like euh, coop, strictement coop, avec l'écran scindé en deux, en fait, c'était assez spécial. C'était assez old school en, en fait, mais c'était pas mal. Thank you, Patrick. <laughs> I still remember um, during the pitch how enthusiastic Patrick was and that afterwards like our whole team, including me, were super excited. It actually feels a little bit the same right now. <laughs> I am pretty excited, maybe a little too excited. <sighs> Oh, no. Thank you. Uh, we are Yomai, uh, a small indie game studio from Berlin, and we are developing Sea of Solitude, or SOS as we call it. The whole journey from the very first concept to actually becoming a part of EA <laughs> Originals is simply amazing. Monty, elle rame la dame. Let me tell you more about oui. our game. Et elle montre un jeu When qui se passe dans l'eau. Bien joué. Magnifique. Monsters. This is at the core of everything. Mais après c'est une allemande hein, elle parle anglais c'est ça, c'est pas sa langue maternelle donc c'est un peu dur. Why playing SOS. What makes this underlying concept so important and so unique is that nearly Every human being can at least somehow relate to or remember the feeling of being lonely. In my case, I started writing the story when I felt the loneliest in my life. I think as an artist, you process your emotional world by letting it out uh, and putting it into your art. Um, I'm still amazed how like, the concept seems to just float out of me, like uh, right into the hand and onto the paper. I think. This is also why so many people can instantly connect with the game, because it's not a made-up story, even though that it takes place in a fantastic setting. In SOS, we try to show how people experience different kinds of loneliness, but also how outsiders, friends, and family bon, see gros, those who pour ceux qui, qui comprennent rien du tout, we achieve all this in uh, ways, elle explique so that comment elle a créé son l'histoire en fait. Elle a écrit l'histoire pendant qu'elle était en, so. en gros euh, seule, isolée. Donc c'est plus ou moins une autobiographie en fait l'histoire du jeu apparemment, même si ça se passe dans un dans un setting un peu from such uh, strong uh, loneliness that her inner feeling, the darkness, the anger, the hopelessness, worthlessness, turns to the outside and she becomes a monster. The game is about finding out why this happened to her, but also how to turn her back into a human. Ultimately, Apparently, the personnage goal is devient to bring un all parce those emotions reste seule, into devient... balance. Some needs to become bigger, Some would be better off a little smaller, but to embrace un peu étrange, en fait, even ce your destructive part, Je vois pas trop le gameplay que ça peut donner, mais bon. In the same way you embrace your joy or your hope, this is what being human is all about, and that's what our game is all about. Thank you. Thank you, Shun. Ok, donc ça devient un monstre parce qu'elle est seule, en gros, c'est ce qu'elle a dit. Elle devient plus ou moins folle. Et euh, l'histoire du jeu serait de comment redevenir humain, apparemment. 
and touches my soul. I'm no child of destiny and no fortune son. I've just chased you so long now. I'm too weak to run. A new day is here, but nothing is new. Alone in my room, I tremble. Ça rappelle un peu les graphismes de Gravity sur euh, PS Vita. J'aime bien. Mais après, ouais, c'est pas. Enfin, pour l'instant, on n'a pas vu grand chose, quoi. Ouais, ça a l'air surtout un jeu psychologique. Genre, elle se bat avec elle-même. Enfin, le personnage qu'on incarne. Qu qu incarne. Dépressif s'abstenir. Un peu, ouais. Alors vous pensez quoi du jeu Non Ça rappelle Gravity moi sur PS Vita Je crois que c'était ça s'appelait comme ça ouais Enfin déjà c'est un peu l'effet le, cartoon Les, euh, les graphismes mais après, bon, l'histoire, non, mais... Ça a l'air d'être un, un petit bon jeu indé, quoi. Oh putain, ça, on s'en fout, par contre. Ah le mec il déteste perdre un jeu. Oh mon dieu. Wow, trop trop bien. Wow, magnifique, magnifique. Wow, il a battu un champion dans un jeu vidéo. Wow. Fou. Been good. You still recovering from that butt whooping? Wow, already starting. Okay. <laughs> Hi everybody. I'm Juju Smith Schuster. Bon, ça va sûrement pas être très très intéressant. Uh, as you guys can see, King of Touchdown celebrations. That's pretty fire. I like that a lot. Um, as you guys know, this is Young Kev, Madden 18, Madden champion. Like, give it up for Young Kev, y'all. Give it up. Madden, Madden, Madden. Young Kev. Il me rappelle euh, un chanteur, lui, un rappeur. Player in Madden is to hurt your arm in baseball. <laughs> That's number one. Number two, you said you had the decision to, to, uh, to go to your quart d'heure de X X Dark Sasuke X X. I chased that money. I still got my diploma, but I chased that money. <laughs> There you go. We're out here chasing money. <laughs> That's awesome. Okay, now the past two, you know, the past few years, how has it been for you? I know you had some ups and downs. It's been tough. I've had a lot of devastating losses. I've been so close so many times. I made the final on TV and got blown out by all those losses. It made me gain a lot of mental toughness, and that's how I got this belt. That's awesome. I, that belt is so amazing. There's a lot of, you know, bling on that belt for you. <laughs> <laughs> well, today, EA Play, you know, first look at the Madden 19 trailer. Super excited. It's going to be so fun. It's lit. I honestly wish I could stay right here and talk to you guys forever, but I'm not going to bore you guys. We're going to go out. 
Bon. Ah, un peu des images. Ce qui est chiant, c'est que tu vois pas de gameplay, quoi. Enfin, après, moi, personnellement, je suis pas fan de ce genre de jeu, mais... Euh... Ça, c'est que de la cinématique, quoi. Bon, bah, en tout cas, Madden 19, quoi. Aucun gameplay. Zéro. I'm Nathanius, professional shoutcaster, here alongside Redwood Studios general manager Michael Martinez. How are you doing today? I'm super excited to be here. Yeah, we're going to do this presentation a little bit differently Redwood and Studios give you your first ça. look at a brand new mobile game in a live winner take all head to head match. Michael, why don't you tell us the rules? Sure thing. The objective is straightforward destroy the opponent's base to win. Unit control, super simple. Just tap it, tap for destination, unit automatically moves there. The most efficient way to destroy the opponent's base is with this giant nuclear missile in the center of the map. Control the missile by standing on a majority of the control points. A bar fills up while the missile is possessed. Whoever controls the missile when the bar fills up, bon, fire the missile. Bon, ça montre des jeux Take sur téléphone. <coughs> to destroy the enemy's base and win. That's it. Sounds great, Michael. Well, enough talking about it. Let's Let's get to this match. Absolutely. All right, ladies and gentlemen, we have an awesome matchup lined up for you here today. Fighting for the blue side of the room. If you could please give a cheer for one of the most formidable RTS players there is. Make some noise for In Control. Yes. His opponent. Je crois que tout le monde attend Bethesda cette année, hein. euh, depuis qu'ils ont annoncé Fallout 76. Fallout 76. Tout le monde attend Bethesda, c'est Now, Mike, it's going to be a real clash of these gaming styles, yeah, the competitive backgrounds that these players have. It should be a great totally. match. It really is. I can't wait. All right, are the players ready? Let's uh, get this thing going. Ready to go. I'm ready to go. Let's do it. All right, let's kick this off. Uh, nice little strategy game for those yes. of you out there. It's a good genre. I'm very excited for this. The players are loading in, and we are ready to the kick match. Here we go. this off. As the players' bases have been deployed, and the action begins like any strategy game. Mm -hmm. Economy will be the focus. We right. have a harvester to start things off. Nothing too crazy yet. Nothing too crazy. Now the infantry is going to come out to hold Ceux qui veulent savoir Fallout, enfin Bethesda, c'est euh, lundi 11 juin à 3h30 du matin. That in control is going from the top side, also very important as Nick at Knight's forces have to circle around the center. Right, let's see if he's able to create a two on one. Is he able to get there? Looks like he's getting there. Here comes GDI with, uh, with uh, Rhino, it's going to rip up those infantry. Demain on aura Microsoft Xbox, donc on verra un peu plus de euh, euh, Battlefield 5. That Rhino, as attack bikes move towards the northwest position, we can see that the missile is beginning to ready and firing that. That takes out half your base. The most important objective on the map is to hold those control zones. Right. Alors ce jeu franchement a l'air bien. Moi j'aime bien les jeux mobiles et tout ça. 
Mais euh, le problème, c'est est-ce qu'on va atteindre un paywall Est-ce qu'à un moment, il va falloir dépenser de l'argent pour acheter euh, des cartes, acheter des unités C'est toujours ça, le, toujours le même problème que les, des, des jeux sur téléphone, en fait. Ouais, il paraît qu'il y aurait possiblement un nouveau Halo, ou alors euh, quelque chose qui est lié à Halo. Missile va bientôt partir, attention, est-ce que les rouges... Oh, il a été tiré, et le rouge a été annihilé, il est mort. Il est mort, son compte en banque est mort, il n'a plus d'argent, on lui a piqué tout son argent dans son téléphone. C'est fini. C'est complètement fini. Il essaye encore de survivre avec quelques unités qui lui restent, de quelques centimes. Est-ce qu'il va avoir assez hmm, Je ne pense pas. Nick at night is trying to get in there, but there's a great turret placement from in control, blocking and just ripping through again those infantry. Bon, en gros, deux par deux, deux camps. Ils se battent pour faire péter le, le missile sur la base de, de l'un ou l'autre. Ouais, sympa. Mon dieu, il vient de mettre 100 euros dans le jeu et il est en train de remonter, c'est incroyable. Magnifique. Dans le camp rouge, on me dit à l'oreillette qu'il est en train de prendre un crédit sur sa banque. Oh mon dieu. Va-t-il avoir assez Est-ce que la banque va être d'accord avec ce crédit Est-ce qu'il va pouvoir rajouter 500 euros d'unité ah, et non, il a été refusé, le bleu gagne, et voilà. <rire> Donc le bleu avait un plus gros compte en banque que le rouge. Ça, c'est comme ça. Ça arrive. Magnifique. Ladies and gentlemen, what you just saw was the worldwide reveal of Command and Conquer Rivals. Ah. Rivals reimagined the real-time strategy experience for mobile. We're giving players complete, continuous control of their armies in quick, competitive, head-to-head -head matches that are fueled by skill and strategy. Now, Rivals will be coming to iOS and Android devices, but I'm excited to announce that Android players can play the pre-alpha today. On peut jouer déjà à Commander and Conquer Rivals sur euh, Android. Thank you. Ah, en alpha. Sympa. Qu'est-ce que c'est que ça Halo Wars 3 Ou alors c'est le trailer de Command and Conquer Ouais c'est le trailer Ah ouais 
Elle, elle prend une hypothèque. C'est le trailer. <rire> Moi ça me fait toujours rire, tu sais les trailers tu crois que c'est un super jeu mais en fait c'était juste le jeu sur mobile, tu vois. <rire> c'est abusé. <rire> Mais moi je me suis dit, euh, comme un con, j'ai dit Halo, Halo Wars 3, tu sais, parce que ça ressemblait en fait au, 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 au tank d'Halo, tu sais, les scorpions et tout, mais en fait, pas du tout. Même si c'est Electronic Arts qui a rien à voir, tu sais. Mais... Okay. And so, as you look at the 10 experiences that you're going to see today, and as you play games this week, there's some things we hope come through. First, that at the very core is choice, is that you as players get to choose how you play, what you play, when you play, and what devices you play on. That in making those choices, you feel you are treated fairly. That no one is given an unfair advantage or disadvantage for how they choose to play that for every moment that you invest we know that you put so much of your life in the budget dans trailer de fou mais c'est ça le problème de maintenant you feel like you are rewarded and énormément de trailers sont super bien faits et au final c'est pour euh, vendre un jeu qui qui a presque rien à voir and that these are experiences that truly et qui est euh, de temps en temps en fait euh, so, bancal parce qu'il faut payer tout ça pour euh, pouvoir y jouer know that we want to be better and that we want to make great games. And that, pour ça que c'est toujours très très dangereux ce genre de trailer. Games, and as much as you love playing them, there's something that is even greater that we can do together. The power of this community when we come together to do amazing things is profound. Last weekend was the third year of our Play to Give program, where we show the world how the power of play can be a positive force for social impact. Millions of you out there participated in nine in-game challenges in our games, logging millions of hours in support of Play to Give. And to celebrate that, we contributed a total of $1 million to three charities that share our vision for a more inclusive world. A world where representation <laughs> and equality are not something we strive for, they are the standards. And where bullying and exclusion are not an everyday threat. These three organizations, the United Nations, he for she, PACE's National Bullying Prevention Center, and Ditch the Label, an anti-bullying organization, all are doing great work, and we're proud to support them through Play to Give. That, and thank you for your support. Thousands of us at EA and millions of you together doing immeasurable good because we love games. Thanks for being with us. And thanks for the incredible privilege of making games for all of you. Now, without further ado, bon, il a remercié tout le monde de donner de l'argent, hein, c'est tout. Ouais. Ça, c'est le résumé. Hein. En thème maintenant. And left our world in chaos, creating, altering, destroying. The anthem is all that remains. There's a storm coming. These walls can't protect us forever.
arme de mêlée. Bouclier. Euh... Pas mal. On a vu des trucs en plus. J'ai l'impression qu'il va avoir différentes catégories. Bon, catégories d'armure, oui. Mais peut-être des plus avancées, parce qu'il y en avait une qui était blanche euh, et verte. Elle, était, elle avait l'air beaucoup plus stylée que les... Oh putain, pas elle. Elle, elle, elle avait l'air beaucoup plus avancée, en fait, technologiquement. Donc peut-être qu'il y aura des différentes grades de, de tenue. So we're going to do something a little bit different for the rest of the show, and we're going to take a deep dive into anthems. So I'm going to bring out some members of the Bioware team to chat with us. Ladies and gentlemen, please give a warm welcome to Casey Hudson, Mark Dara, and Kathleen Rutsard. En tout cas, pas mal. Euh, arme de mêlée et bouclier, donc euh, ça rajoute du... du gameplay, on va dire. De la variété dans le gameplay, c'est cool. Right, Niveau stratégique. Thanks, ça va peut-être être un bon jeu. C'est très excitant. Donc, Casey, on va commencer à aller juste dans le jeu et commencer avec vous. Donc, maintenant, nous savons que vous avez commencé, ou Casey, vous avez commencé votre carrière à Bioware, way back in the day, mais vous avez pris un couple d'années off. Mais avant que vous reviez, vous avez en fait travaillé sur Anthem avant que vous reviez. Oui, c'est vrai. Donc, d'abord, c'est incroyable d'être de retour. C'est incroyable d'être de faire des jeux pour les fans de Bioware. Nous avons les meilleurs fans. So it's been super satisfying to come back to it. And you know, I just want to be able to continue the legacy of the studio. And that's kind of where it started with Anthem, is just thinking about you know, what is the evolution of a Bioware game. And we wanted to create a brand new world for people to discover, you know, a whole new world of story and character. But we also wanted to do something that was you know, more of a dynamic and living world, and a game that would change every time you came back and played it. We also wanted to do something where, you know, if you wanted to invite your friends into it, then you could do that as well. So that was really the initial vision of the game, not an MMO, not a multiplayer game with stories sort of bolted on this side, but something new and different, and I think the team has really captured that vision over the years. Your fans really love the stories from Bioware, but I think we're kind of curious how you're planning to make story work in this shared world. So a great story for Bioware is really about characters that you can have a connection with, um, choices you get to make. Franchement, c'est un résumé de l'histoire de Bioware. Like c'est vraiment you. pas trop In intéressant. In a lot of multiplayer games, those things get diluted because you're mixing multiplayer and storytelling into the same areas. Now you can build a solution to that, but you have to really build it into the core of the game, and that's what we try to do with with Anthem. It's what we call our world, my story. So when you're out in the open world. The world is really dangerous, and you're focused on your mission. And this is where. Après, ils ont montré des sortes de boss. Uh, ça a l'air pas mal. Genre vraiment des gros trucs. Uh, ça sera peut-être des. Je sais pas, des red boss. Après, j'ai l'impression que ça ressemble un peu à Destiny. Destiny. C'est calqué en fait sur le mode de jeu, uh, comment fonctionne l'univers, on va dire, de Destiny. And this is what we mean when we talk about our world. It's a, it's a shared world that we all experience together. Okay, But then when I finish my contre. mission, I come back to a base like Fort Tarsus. And this is a single player experience. I turn in my, my uh, rewards, I talk to some characters, I experience the choices of my action. And this is where your story really lives and breathes. And by doing it this way, we are, we're able to combine that impact and agency of a single player story with the fun of teaming up with your friends to play co-op in combat. And we're also designing it so that Donc we can have story for years euh, to come. Être so un, one of the first things that we hear un solo, when, uh, on peut from our community en fait. is they want to continue to play in our worlds. When they Moi, play in Mass Effect préfère. or Dragon Age, players want more story. And so we've designed Genre, an mission, on a base, that we can actually add more story for years to come. come. And it could be anything. Notre, uh, tenue, etc. A new moment with a character that you've grown to ah, love. Sûr, or uh, events uh, in the world uh, that uh, deep into the lore Or an entirely new mais en gros, on peut complètement jouer seul. Well, euh, mais je pense que, que avoir des amis va être demandé so de temps en temps. Quoi. You, uh, writing, pour des gros monstres, genre des boss de raid ou des trucs comme ça. Like world, like Anthem, well, what's really exciting for us, um, and not just the writers, but all of the, the devs, the designers, the artists, is that 
we're creating something new and mysterious for players to discover. So at the heart of the premise of Anthem is a world left unfinished by the gods. But the gods left behind Elle a l'air super lourde cette tenue. Oh. Le mec il a quoi des lance grenades et tout quoi dessus. Called the anthem of creation and the chaos of those things pushing against each other um, means that the world is constantly being reshaped in new and unpredictable ways. Yeah, violent storms, mutated creatures, gigantic Alors, apparemment dans le monde ça qui est intéressant c'est que dans le monde va être en constant mouvement, il y aura des tornades aléatoires, il y aura des des bestioles qui se baladent en fait près de Uh, près de la base, des trucs comme ça, ça, ça peut être sympa. Il n'y aura, aura pas de trop de choses scriptées, je pense, à part l'histoire principale, euh, la mission principale, l'histoire du jeu, euh, rien ne sera scripté, donc ça, c'est pas mal. So like what is the fantasy fulfillment? What are the new things you actually get to go and do that are different from what you've played before? So that's where we start and then once we think about those things, um, you know, that's the power of creating new IP, especially for games is that you actually get to build a whole ah, les ça va, universe ça, ça that's meant to bring out a certain experience. And then once we do that, then we kind of we still need to build all the rest of the stuff and what unlocks us creatively is to think about like principles around art style, tone, and even the technology and the politics of, of our new world. And then from there, we can actually go and build out every last detail. Yeah, and one of the uh, unique challenges for Anthem is that it's a world, an experience that's meant to feel alive, like it's happening uh, right now. And so the world is always changing, um, whether the uh, storms, uh, seasons, And um, yeah, it's a really great concept to write for because what it means is it gives us the opportunity to drop into the world almost in real time a dramatic event that changes the world for everyone. And that could be anything from gameplay to lore. I mean, the, all of the moving parts in the dynamic world sound really cool the way that they sound like they're going to come together. But even though there's obviously a lot going on, it really all comes back to your character. So let's talk about who we're going to be playing as and why we're fighting these crazy beasts. So you are a freelancer, uniquely skilled to pilot these exo ja these javelin exo suits, and uh, you need those suits to survive and fight in this world because the world will kill you. Um, but on top of that, uh, our ancient rivals, the Dominion, have uh, they've discovered a way they think to weaponize the anthem of creation and so um, we need to stop them and protect the free people of Tarsus. Now I've heard you call this power armor. Well, l'histoire a l'air un peu things. simple is quand it, même. Is it a suit? Is it a javelin? Like what's the what's the canon term here? We call them javelins and there are four and uh, they each have a Quatre javelins, ranger. There's the ranger. And then there's the Colossus. Colossus ça doit être the arme lourde. Interceptor va sûrement être truc très storm. rapide et sto yeah, ça so ressemble uh, énormément à Destiny par contre. Quand même. Way to play the game. Uh, but the thing to remember is like Kathleen said, you're not your suit. You are a freelancer, a pilot, which means you can decide which suit you want to use based on your mood. Par contre, ce qui est bien, c'est que on n'est pas limité à une seule tenue, c'est ça qu'ils disent. Parce que vu qu'on est un freelancer, donc un, une personne qui, euh, qui travaille avec qui a des missions et tout ça, donc on peut changer de tenue à tout moment. Donc ça, c'est bien. Ça, c'est le ranger. Ah, le bouclier, c'est classe. Ça c'est Colossus. Oh la vache, ça tue. Ok, ça c'est cool. Il y a de la destruction aussi de... Ah, d'environnement. So the javelins are awesome, but we're going to take a couple questions right now. So Casey tweeted, some of you may have seen, asking for uh, people out there to send us your questions. And the first one is going to be from at it's sweet Nicole, who asks, as a player who is all about making their character their own, what kind of customization options will be available in Anthem? Yeah, so we really want pe players to express themselves, both through customizing okay, the way their, their uh, javelin plays, through gear and uh, weapons, 
but also being able to personalize the way that it looks, uh, both through paint jobs as well as changing the actual uh, geometry of the suit itself. We want teams to be able to do okay, this donc il y a la couleur et la géométrie and de la tenue elle-même. Donc qu'est-ce que ça veut dire Je pense que des différentes parties, en fait, un peu comme Allo. Je pense. Genre avec les différents casques, les différentes épaulettes, des trucs comme ça. Yeah, so we are going to have some cosmetic and vanity items that you'll be able to purchase, but you're always going to know what you're going to buy before you. Ok, il n'y a pas de loot box ici, c'est déjà bien. On va pouvoir acheter quand même des cosmétiques. Donc si c'est que des cosmétiques, ça va. Franchement, il y en a dans Titanfall 2, c'est aucun problème. Mais ça, c'est bien. Well, I'm glad to hear that I can make my javelin pink. That's really all I wanted to know, I'm going to be honest. All right, Casey, we talked earlier about this being a co-op experience. So can you tell me a little bit about how the team gameplay in Anthem is going to work? Yeah, it, it really is about, you know, the fun of teaming up as, as a team of superheroes and working together. So um, you want to get a few people together of different classes. Moi, so, je suis un peu triste you know, que quatre we're classes. see the, the Colossus, you know, just hammering people on the ground in gameplay. If we can... Have a look at that. So heavy artillery, being really strong, you know, in melee combat. And then here you've got the ranger cool, shooting down from above. Combo. And then they're using com, you know, combos and special abilities and stuff like that. But what I love is you don't just run around; you're swimming and flying. On peut well. aller sous l'eau aussi. Hein. So it's interesting because Les déjà montré the dernière. Slate Tones wants to know how will you balance multiplayer with single-player storytelling. So Anthem is really built around trying to combine. The, uh, the impact of having your own personal story with the fun of playing with other players. But we really want to make sure that, uh, that playing with other people feels like a choice. So for people that want to just ex experience the story, we're, you're going to be able to do that. Now going out into an open world like this uh, by yourself is going to be a little bit more challenging than, uh, than if the team of four people. And we've really tried to balance the co-op experience to be fun even for people that don't normally engage in this kind of thing. So I really hope that everyone at least gives co-op a try. Le jeu, c'est un peu étrange. Ils disent quand même que le jeu c'est un solo, mais quand même ils te poussent un peu à, à tester la coop. Donc, euh, en fin de jeu, je pense que en end game, ça va sûrement être des gros boss, genre des, des raids, des boss raids ou des trucs comme ça, un peu à la, un peu à la Destiny encore une fois. On sait qu'il faut être quatre sûrement pour le, pour le tuer. So you start in the Strider, which is like a giant walker, and it's your forward base of operations. You have a conversation with your crew, Halleck, Faye, and Owen, and you'll hear Owen. He's going to talk us through the mission as we, as we experience it here. Um, and yeah, then you just get into your javelin suit, and you head out with your friends. All right. Well, thank you so much, Mark, Casey, Kathleen, nice for talking to me about Anthem today. Uh, we're going to go ahead and roll the gameplay now. Enjoy, everybody. Okay, gameplay. Par contre, il est super joli, hein, quand même. Il faut avouer que là, on est euh, à un très haut niveau de détail. C'est super, super beau. Freelancer, time to get to work. Faye said these bastards made some kind of acid and using it as a weapon. So... Find where they're making this garbage and shut it all down. Okay, ça c'est le colosse. Il va falloir un, un bon, bon, très, très bon PC. <laughs> Owen, what's cool. the plan here? Oh. Picking up loads of scars nearby. Take a look around the area, but uh, be careful. Apparemment, la tenue sera affectée par l'environnement parce qu'il y avait écrit cool, genre il est passé sous l'eau donc il est refroidi. Ça c'est le ranger. Ok, beau, right. beau, beau débris. Checking out the scar camp some more. Look at all the weapons! Oh, and the, and the turrets! Better move quickly. 
les, les environnements ont l'air d'être ultra massifs, ultra grands. C'est super beau. Ok, bouclier, ça donne différents types de, de gameplay, comme je disais, c'est pas mal, niveau stratégique, en multi, c'est cool. Ça a l'air quand même très très orienté coop. Oh joli celui-là. J'ai peur que pour les personnes. Les personnes qui jouent seules, ça va être très 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 dur. What the hell was that? I think that was whatever laid all the eggs around here. The sound came from below your position. On the plus side, this definitely counts toward what I say. C'est stylé le celui-là qui se téléporte. This is massive gunk leading down. Follow it. We should find the source. C'est y a y a pas le nom de la classe. On peut aller super profond dans la terre, ça c'est beau. Je pense pas qu'on aura des compagnons pour le solo. Enfin, ils en ont pas parlé, ils l'ont pas dit. À moins que je l'ai loupé, mais normalement, solo, solo, quoi. Yep, and that was uh, that was actually just a short version of the full demo that we brought here to LA. So if you want to come by the Anthem Theater here at uh, EA Play, you can check out the game live. So I'm sure the question on everyone's minds: When do we get to play? Ah. So Anthem comes out February 22nd, 2019, on uh, Xbox One, PlayStation 4, and PC. So mark your calendars, everybody. Fire février partout. So again, le 22 février 2019, on a encore you le temps. So right. Give it up for Casey Hutchins, everybody. Ça c'était cool. I also want to give a big thank you to all of the developers. Le gameplay est bon, le gameplay est bon quand même. Hein. Bon moi je suis super hypé, mais si je reste calme, euh, le gameplay est très très bien. Ah, L'environnement est magnifique par contre. Oh la vache, c'est super, super, super grand. C'est énorme. Donc ça peut être vraiment un très bon jeu avec des add-ons ou des trucs comme ça. Vraiment un jeu qui peut durer longtemps en fait. Yarny is back with a buddy in Unravel 2, which is also available today. Plus, you can take on your friends in Command and Conquer Rivals starting today as well. Now, that's a lot of old, Faudra qu'on regarde ce que c'est le exactement le Origin Access. Il y a plein de jeux à qu'on peut télécharger, jouer, etc. Going, because in just a few moments, the FIFA 18 World Cup live tournament is going to begin. I'm going to head outside and check out the games, but I want to thank everybody for coming down to EA Play today and watching the press conference, and have a great weekend. That's fini. Il a fini. Enfin, je crois. Ouais, ça permet les réduits qui jouent en avance. Faut voir ce qu'il y a d'intéressant dessus.
Bon bah on t'aime quoi. 